Hello Sword Fam! Welcome back to my YouTube channel, I'm Brittany, and for this video I'm going to be talking about traveling with sharp swords. Lots of folks in the sword community are interested in competing in cutting tournaments or going to events that offer cutting workshops, and they may be tempted to travel with their own sharp sword. I'm here to tell you that one, it is totally fine to do that, but there are some rules or at least some good ideas that you might want to keep in mind. For this video specifically, I'm going to be talking about flying with a sharp sword as opposed to driving, or you might even want to consider shipping it ahead of time to the event or to somebody in the area of the event that you're going to. Um, but for this video, we're going to talk about flying on airlines with sharp swords. When flying with sharp swords, you have to consider your destination. Are you flying domestically or are you flying internationally? And even then, if you're flying internationally, is it a very long haul trip where you have multiple stops? Like if you're going to Europe from North America, for example, you might be stopping in more than one country before you reach your destination. And this is important information to know, especially if you're traveling with a sharp weapon. And just to be safe, if you are traveling internationally, you have two different governments or nations to check with in terms of the legality of traveling with your weapon. One, your home country make sure that you can actually travel legally and get on a plane legally in your own country um, before you start flying any trips with a sharp. The other one is the destination country. Make sure that you're checking with the destination country, especially through customs, that they will let you enter the country with this sharp sword. If you have any layovers between your home country and your destination country, it's a good idea to check with those as well. Okay, so once you've determined that it is legal and it is allowable for you to travel with a sharp, then you can start planning how to actually package this thing for flying. I very strongly, strongly recommend getting a rifle case like this. In particular, I suggest a hard rifle case. There are some that are soft. I would not use a soft rifle case. Absolutely get a hard case like this one for a few reasons. One, the hard case will protect your sword, and it will also protect other people from your sword. This is the best and safest way to travel with your sharp, for the sharp, and for other people. The other reason I really like to use a hard rifle case is it is very obvious that it is a weapon. And now that might be something that you're not comfortable with walking around in an airport, that's totally fine, I understand that, but the nice thing about it is that it is unlikely to get lost. When it is packaged in a rifle case, baggage claim and TSA will probably treat it like a weapon and it won't get tossed in with everything else because they need to be really careful about moving firearms around. When traveling within the United States, and in my experience also within Canada and between those two countries, it's actually not uncommon at all for passengers on an airline to be traveling with firearms. They're usually sport shooters or hunters, and they will travel just like this with a rifle case. But as far as sharps go, keeping it in a rifle case is not going to get you in trouble. Again, I urge you, check the guidelines and the rules for your airline and make sure that you're up to date on any laws regarding traveling with weapons of any kind. If you're not sure where to find that information about the legality or even just the guidelines, um, one of the best places to start is when you book your flight with whatever airlines. Go to their website and they will have a whole bunch of information on how they transport different types of items. You'll get a whole list of things that are completely prohibited and other things that are restricted that need to go in your checked baggage. And again, if you're not sure and you're kind of nervous, like I was the first time, you can call ahead on that airline and just get confirmation that it's totally fine. So you've gotten your sword, you've gotten your rifle case, it's a hard case. So let's talk about how we wanna package this up. One, label it. Um, I strongly recommend having some sort of external permanent label or a tag label that identifies this as being yours, just like you would normal checked baggage. Make sure you have your name, your address, and your phone number so that if this does get lost, for some reason, it can be returned to you. What's really important is you might be very tempted to lock this case. Do not lock it. You will notice right here 
And sometimes there's some on the ends as well, different places where you can put a padlock through where you can zip tie it. Don't do it. You're gonna be tempted, you're gonna think it's safer. Do not. TSA can and absolutely will check what's in this case. Do not lock it. What you can do if you're concerned about security because these little tabs might just, you know, pop open, they probably won't, they're pretty secure. But if that concerns you, instead of putting a lock on, sometimes what I do is I'll tie a little string through it and just put a little bow. That way it's easy for the TSA agents to undo it. And they are pretty good about redoing it, but that'll give you peace of mind, but do not lock this case. Rifle cases will usually come with some sort of foam. Keep it in there, it helps keep the sword safe. I have it between two layers of foam. Obviously there's the bottom layer and the top layer, and here's my sharp. You'll notice that I have a note. It is very clear. Caution, very sharp. This might seem like overkill, but trust me, it is very, very helpful. A lot of people in baggage claim will see this. They'll x-ray it, see it as a sword, and might not realize immediately that it's sharp. Do them a favor, let them know. I leave that right there. It is so out in the open, it's very obvious. As soon as you open that case to see what's in there, you know immediately that it's sharp. This is just a safe extra bit of caution. I strongly recommend doing this. Beyond this, I like to wrap my swords very loosely in some cloth. Um, not for any reason in terms of like safety, because like if it's gonna cut somebody, it's gonna cut through cloth. Um, but generally speaking, this will kind of help prevent fingertips from any kind of handling. It won't stop it entirely. Obviously they can grab it, take it out and inspect it. But if they just wanna take a quick look and make sure there's nothing else in there, you know, this might prevent little fingertips um, and little fingerprints getting on there. The other reason why I keep it loosely wrapped in a cloth is because I oil my swords to protect them. That oil will sometimes seep into the foam. And then if you don't have a layer between the foam and your blade, it can actually stain it just a little bit. So this isn't necessarily for traveling on airlines. It's just like a smart way to store your sharp in a rifle case anyway. I haven't done it for this sword yet, but another thing you can do is you can get one of those little gift bag tags, put it around the hilt, and it'll have your name, address, and contact information as well, just in case for some reason it gets torn off or it gets like destroyed on the label that you put on the outside. Your fail safe is putting it again on the inside. All right, so we've packed up the sword. We are ready to fly. The next hurdle is actually getting it on the plane. Don't be nervous. That's the biggest piece of advice. There is nothing that you are doing that is illegal if you've already checked all of the laws and cleared it. There's nothing wrong with traveling with a shark. You shouldn't be nervous, you shouldn't be scared. But also, don't lie about it. When you go to check in, check it like a normal bag, just like you would any other luggage. However, make sure you tell them what this is and the check-in clerk will ask. Make sure you tell them that it's a sword don't be vague and wishy-washy. Don't be like, oh, it's just sporting equipment. Cause they're gonna look at that rifle case and go, just sporting equipment, really? Be honest. You do not wanna misrepresent this as a rifle to the baggage claim people or the check-in people or the airline. You wanna be very clear about what it is. Passerbys, other passengers, it doesn't matter what they think it is when you're walking into the airport, but when you're dealing with the employees of the airline, be very clear. This is a sharp sword. Most of the time when I've checked in and I've told them that, they were totally fine. They just, you know, sometimes charge me an extra baggage fee because it counted as sporting equipment. Um, sometimes they counted as oversized. Other times they didn't care, they just charged me the normal checked baggage fee and it wasn't a big deal. However, in my experience, it's only happened twice. I checked in and the check-in clerk was not really sure what to do, what the protocol was about handling firearms or any kind of weapon. So they had to call their supervisor and run through a bunch of stuff and ask me a bunch of questions. This is totally okay. It's unlikely, but be patient and understand that they probably just aren't familiar, but if they talk to their manager or their supervisor, it'll probably be very fine. From there, you will get a little ticket and anybody that's flown before with checked baggage you know what this little ticket is, but you've probably never cared about it ever, but it'll have a little barcode and that is one half of the other ticket. The one side of the ticket goes with your baggage and it will track it. Hang on to that ticket. You will need it just in case something happens. 
You might also need it when you get off the plane and go to retrieve your bag after your flight. Once you reach your destination and you go to baggage claim, it's very unlikely that a rifle case will be put through on the carousel like normal baggage. You'll most likely have to pick it up at a baggage claim office, or it will probably be put with the other sporting goods or oversized bags. You can always make sure to check that out when you go through the check-in process before you get on your flight. Um, but usually if you just go right over to the baggage claim office, they will tell you very quickly where your rifle case is. Remember that little ticket we talked about? Keep it, you might need it to actually claim your rifle case when you are done. If you're traveling internationally, once you claim your bags, you will need to go through customs. Customs officials expect you to declare any items that you are bringing into the country. This includes your sword. So yes, don't be afraid to claim it honestly. They might pull you aside for questioning, but if all you're traveling with is a sharp sword and you've already done your research for the legalities of doing so, you just have to be honest and you have nothing to worry about. It can certainly be inconvenient trying to travel on a plane with a sharp only because it can be expensive with the baggage fees. It's sort of a pain in the butt having to travel with even more checked luggage. So if you can avoid it, it's sometimes easier. But if you really do want to bring your sharp with you or you need to because it's, it's your competition sword, for example, don't be nervous. It is very okay as long as you've checked with the laws to travel with your sharp. If you're very concerned about this getting lost, Again, that's why I like using the rifle case. It is less likely that they're just going to lose a rifle case. Um, that's a little bit more risky for them, so they will treat it a little bit better than normal baggage. Um, however, things can happen, and that can be really scary, especially when your sharp sword is very expensive. It's not a bad idea to have a insurance policy on your sharp swords. In fact, I know a couple of people who do have insurance policies on their swords because they are that expensive. Um, but that's a personal choice and that's totally up to you. And it kind of just depends on how risky you feel about traveling with your sharp. So I hope that information was helpful. Maybe put your mind at ease a little bit about traveling with a sharp sword. Again, it's not a big deal. Make sure you're open and honest about what you're traveling with. Check the local laws for the country that you are leaving and going to check the airline's guidelines for allowing you to travel with this kind of object. And then obviously just be smart about how you package it. Make sure that you mitigate the risk of yourself getting hurt, any TSA agents getting hurt, or the sword getting damaged as well. So with that, I hope you found the information helpful and that it gives you a little bit of peace of mind to prepare for traveling with a sharp sword. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support.